let's do some math for fun. And this is the Euler's formula, right? e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. And this is what I'm going to do. Let me go ahead and say let theta equals to a plus b. And of course, if you want to use alpha beta, up to you. So what I will do next is let me plug in a plus b into all these data right here. But I will focus on this side first, if you guys don't mind. So let me write down cosine for this data. It becomes the a plus b, right? And then we will have the plus, i is still the i, and then we have the sine, and then this data becomes the a plus b. Okay, and then we will have to do the same thing to this, right? So we will have e to the i times a plus b, like this. And now I would like to focus on this side here, especially for the exponent. Let me go ahead and distribute the i into the exponent. So we will have e to the i a, right? So let me just put that down right here. And then we'll have to add i b. But you know, when you're adding exponents, it's the same as saying multiplying by e, you keep the base, and then with that exponent, which is i b like this. Well, for this part, I can go ahead and utilize the Euler's formula again, where the angle is just the a. So let me write this down right here. This is going to be parentheses cosine a plus i sine a, isn't it, for this part? And then for this, I will have to go ahead and plug in b into the theta. So we multiply this by cosine b plus i sine b. This is pretty cool, isn't it? What am I doing? I don't know. This, right, two terms times two terms, as usual. Let's go ahead and you know, foil the out, multiply the out, draw the arrows as usual if you like. First of all, you see cosine a times cosine b. This is just how it is. We cannot do anything too much. It's not cosine squared because the angles are different. So let me write this down as cosine a times cosine b, just like how it is. And then we do this times that. Cosine a times i sine b, well, once again, I cannot do too much. So let me put down plus i first and then cosine b, I mean cosine a, <laughs> sine b, like this, right? And then I finish with the cosine a already, so let me go ahead and do this times that, which is, let me put it down here, plus i, and then here we have the sine a, cosine b. And then I will do this times that. And you see, i times i, which is i squared, which is negative 1. So we will minus, okay? Sine a times sine b. So this is just minus sine a, sine b, all right? And now, these two terms have the i. These two, they don't have the i, isn't it? What can I do next? Well, let me just write this down first, that this is cosine a cosine b, and then we'll minus sine a sine b. And then for this two, they have the i, so let me go ahead and do this. Say plus, and I will factor out the i right here, right? And I'll put parentheses, and I'll put this right here inside of the parentheses. First, let me put down this right here, if you guys don't mind. Let me write down sine a cosine b first, all right? This is sine a cosine b. And then we add it with cosine a, sine b. Okay? Does this look familiar? Does this look familiar to you guys? Well, on the left-hand side, you know this is the real part. And this is the complex part because you have the i. Likewise, on the right-hand side, this right here, they have no i, so they are real. This right here is the complex part because we have the i. The left-hand side and the right-hand side, the real parts must match. Likewise, the complex part also match as well. So, let me show you. Check this out. Cosine of a plus b, right here. This is the same as this, isn't it? It must be the same as cosine a, cosine b, minus sine a, sine b. And then, if you look at the complex part, I don't care about the i, I just care about the sine of a plus b, like that. This must be the same as that, isn't it? And I just proved the angle sum formula for sine and cosine. That's it.